Quite an evening for you here in Gatlinburg this evening, and we'll be bringing you many moments to remember, we'll say. So, if you have not yet located your seat for this evening, go ahead and find your way there. We welcome you again on behalf of the Gatlinburg Visitor and Convention Bureau and the staff here to Rocky Top's 30th birthday bash. in just about one minute, so Visitor and Convention Bureau, welcome to tonight's 30th birthday bash for Rocky Top. First of all, we'd like to thank our sponsors for this evening's event, the Kroger Company, Knoxville Coca-Cola, McNelly Whaley Ford Motor Company, Cellular One, all of these sponsors, we certainly appreciate their support, and there are some very special people here that we would also like to recognize at this time. First of all, Gatlinburg City Manager, Cindy Cameron Ogle. <laughs> President of Sevier County's UT Alumni Chapter, Dick Vance. <laughs> Vice Chancellor of Development and Alumni Affairs from the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, Jack Williams. From ESPN, Mike Godfrey. From CBS Sports, Tim Brando. University of Tennessee head football coach, Philip Fulmer. Bobby and Sonny Osborne, the Osborne Brothers. <laughs> Country guitar legend, Roy Clark. <laughs> the son of Felice and Budlow Bryant, Dane Bryant. And finally, the reason that we are here tonight, Ms. Felice Bryant, ladies and gentlemen. And now for an official welcome from the city of Gatlinburg, we ask you to welcome the mayor of Gatlinburg, Fred McMahon. Fred. Thank you, Jay. Well, howdy, folks, howdy. We're certainly glad everyone came tonight. Rocky Top, Tennessee. We recorded, I'm in a band downtown. We recorded this thing in 78. We would play it two times every night for the folks when they come to our show. So, uh, well, I'm not starting naming names because I don't remember all the people here, but certainly glad to have all these fine folks in Gallenberg. I want you to come back every chance you get. And at this time, I would like to ask Alan Newton to come up here to the podium for just a moment here. Alan, I got something I want to give you. Yeah, come on up here. I've known Alan now several years, worked with him on several events. And uh, this is from the Office of the Mayor of Gatlinburg, Tennessee, Certificate of Appreciation. Presented to Mr. Alan Newton, Special Events Coordinator, for his commitment in honoring the talents of Felice and Boodle O'Brien for their well-known song, Rocky Top, which was written at the Gatlinburg Inn in Gatlinburg, Tennessee in 1967, and has become the state anthem for all the University of Tennessee alumni and fans. His significant and inno innovative efforts has succeeded in creating the annual commemoration known as Rocky Top Birthday Bash, which pays tribute to this songwriting. Here you go, Alan, I hope you enjoy that. Thanks for everything there, Al. Give him a big hand there, folks. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Oh, we want a picture here. Okay. I'm a politician. I'll make that picture there. <laughs> We're certainly glad you're here and everybody enjoyed this meal. I'm sure you're going to have a good meal. Thank you, Jay. You bet. 
Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Not only a fine mayor, he's a fine picker, too. Thank you very much, Fred. And now for our invocation as we bless our meal, invite Reverend Wayne Cook from First Baptist Church in Pigeon Forge. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, what a joy it is to be in this place tonight to celebrate in this wonderful occasion of this birthday bash on Rocky Top. Father, I thank you that uh, you have put in the heart and all of the Bryants that song to write. It's brought so much joy at so many different athletic events and all throughout our state. And Father, uh, even tonight, I just want to thank you for her life and for what it means to each and every one uh, that is here tonight. And Lord Jesus, I thank you that you gave her and her husband a beautiful scene to write that song here in Gatlinburg. Father, I'm thankful for your creative hand that's all around us and very evident of it and the beauty that's here in Gatlinburg. Now, Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you that you've made it possible tonight for each and every one of these friends together, for different ones to reunite in their friendships together around the table. And Father, we're so thankful for your love. It's very evident even in this room. And Lord Jesus, we know that there was a time on Old Calvary, a place called Golgotha, a rocky hill, where your son, Jesus Christ, died for each and every one of us. Father, we're so thankful for that. We're thankful now for this food. and Pray that you'd bless it to the nourishment of our bodies and to thy service. For it's in Jesus' precious name that I pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Wayne Cook from First Baptist Church in Pigeon Forge. That was a very nice presentation for Alan Newton as well. Alan's about to move on to a new job working for the entire county of Sevier County, so it's very nice that he's recognized this evening. Thank you, Bill. Well, come on up. One of our sponsors is here this evening. Uh, Bill Spade is here from Cellular One. Bill, come on up and say hello to folks. Thank you, Jay. This is not a Cellular One commercial. Because of Rocky Top Alan Newton, Coach Fulmer's staff, and what we've seen in Sevier County, I would like to say thank you for supporting excellence, scholarship, and the things our young people should look toward, and of course, Coach Fulmer epitomizes that. Because of Rocky Top, Alan's excellence, and we're going to miss him, but those other people who supported him and this whole project this weekend, I just wanted you to know that because of it, our love for you and East Tennessee and the Big Orange, my company has agreed to up our support for excellence in East Tennessee, scholarships, the Big Orange, and I challenge other businesses to do the same. Coach Fulmer, thank you for having a wonderful group. Alan, we're going to miss you. Jay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy undoubtedly one of the most wonderful experiences that you will ever have the opportunity to participate in. Thank you and good evening. Jay, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Felice and Boudlow Bryant, one of the premier songwriting teams of all time, wrote so many songs. Wake Up Little Susie, Love Hurts, Bye Bye Love, All I Have to Do is Dream, just to name a few. Perhaps one of the most loved songs ever written by this great duo is a little bluegrass number that we've come to know as Rocky Top. We ask that you now direct your attention to the video wall as we pay tribute to Felice and Boudelot and Rocky Top. Enjoy your meal. And I finally said, well, how's this? And I started off on Rocky Top. It just fell in 
out of the blue, I said, wish that I was on a rocky top down in the Tennessee hill. Yeah, and then he stopped and says, how's that? One, two, three, he's climbed on rocky top, looking for a moonshine steel. Strangers ain't come down from rocky top, I reckon they never will. Corn won't grow at all on rocky top, there's too rocky by far. You've written so many songs, but do you have a particular favorite? What is your favorite of all songs that you've written? I don't really know. I don't have. I a... wish that I was on a rocky uh, That's got to rank among them, I'll tell you. <laughs> and I did. I told him. I said, "And I don't know if I'm coming back." <laughs> and he slammed the guitar and said, uh, "How's that?" Wish that I was on a rocky top. Just started doing the melody and the words. The whole thing came together. All at all at really? one time. Mm -hmm. It just. It just happened, it just fell into our basket, and uh, there it was. How long did it take you to write? About 10 minutes for Rocky Top. Really? Yeah. We've been doing some, some material for Archie Campbell for an album he was doing called The Golden Years. <laughs> and we were working three solid weeks, hard. Yeah, we... And so we were just, we were in fertile territory. I mean, just um, songs were just coming 240. And we were in Gatlinburg. In the midst of all that beautiful scenery and the mountains and everything, and Felice was really getting tired of the, the um, golden years. She thought they were about 25, 30 years premature, you know? <laughs> And she said, I've got to do something else. We've just got to write something a little happier. Well, you remember when you were going to do an album called The Golden Years. Right. And I had to have an album, and I was doing a show every night, six nights a week in Gatlinburg. Right. She just absolutely said, that's it. And I said, well, all right, how is this? And I grabbed the yeah, guitar and started, <laughs> and started right into Rocky Top. And she said, that's good. And she fell right in. And within 10 minutes, it was written. <laughs> With all that stuff that I wanted you to write, to kill time, you wrote Rocky Top. <laughs> <laughs> and how many records has it sold? It was Utopia on Top of a Mountain. And the strangers who climbed old Rocky Top and never came back, they weren't revenueers who got killed up there. They were people looking for paradise and found it up there. Well, there is, a, there's not a formula. There, there's a, just sort of a gift for it. It's a God-given talent, I, I'm sure. Who's your partner here? This is Cassette. She writes our lyrics. <laughs> All right. Budlo had the, he started on the melody as I've said in umpteen thousand interviews, and uh, he was angry. And he said, we'll call it Rocky Top. How about that? And I said, fine. That's it. The story doesn't change. Only my lies change. Have you noticed? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. J. Julian, uh, it appealed to him as a fight song for the football team. And uh, we found out about it later. Someone said, have you been to a UT game? And we said, no. He says, well, uh, they're using Rocky Top as a fight song. And, and we had to meet Jay and became quite friendly with him. And uh, he came to Nashville when they made it officially the state song.
You'll always be home sweet home to me. Get a rocky top, rocky top Tennessee. Rocky top Tennessee. You go up, rocky top Tennessee. Once two strangers climbed old rocky top looking for moonshine still. Strangers ain't come down from rocky top, reckon they never will. Corn don't grow up. Rocky top foils too, soils too rocky right by far. <laughs> All the Something guys on jar, right? top on rocky, rocky top get their corn, corn from, from a, a jar. jar. Very good. Uh, rocky top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. You'll always be home sweet home to me. Good old rocky top, rocky top Tennessee, rocky top Tennessee. I've had years of cramped up city life, trapped like a duck in a pen. All I know is it's a pity life can't be simple again. Rocky Top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Rocky Top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Rocky Top. Home sweet home to me, good old Rocky Top. Home sweet home to me, poor old Rocky Top, Rocky Top, Tennessee. Good old Rocky Top, Rocky Top, Tennessee. Rocky Top, Tennessee. Good old Rocky Top, Rocky Top, Tennessee. Rocky Top, Tennessee. Rocky Top, Tennessee. Rocky Top, Tennessee. Yeah! 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 I remember 1972, the Tennessee band was playing uh, Alabama in Nayland Stadium, and we did a circle drill. And there was a tune that we played, I'd never heard it before. Barry McDonald, our arranger, one of the greatest arrangers in the world, did this country medley. And one of the tunes was Rocky Top. Well, the crowd went wild over it. And uh, that's, the, that's the beginning of Rocky Top. It's since has become the state song, and uh, I can remember the last year I was band director at Tennessee, we would tabulate how many times we played Rocket Top. And it was 479 times in the fall of the ball game. And people wanted more of it. And it's one of the most contagious tunes ever written. Uh, Felice, uh, we wish you the very best. You know, we all love you and the Tennessee fans love you and, and Boudelow and they love Rocket Top. You have brought so much joy 
into everyone's life, not only in Tennessee, but everywhere. I know I was in London last fall, and I got in a taxi, and he asked me where I was from. I said, Tennessee. And do I know some of those people in the Grand Ole Opry? I said, no, many of them. And he said, uh, do you know the Bryants, Felice and Boudelot Bryant? They were over there a few years ago, and he started singing Rocket Top there in London. I was so happy I even tipped the cab driver. Well, Felice, uh, Rocky Top has become the battle cry of the University of Tennessee athletic program. If it's not going good, play Rocky Top and people will pick it up. And if it's going really good, play Rocky Top and people will get excited and cheer and keep it going for us. So there's never been a song or a moment, I think, that has done more for UT athletics than the song Rocky Top has done. Felice, you have any idea what Rocky Top is meant to the Tennessee Lady Vols. Well, get this number. It was played over 50 times in the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship game. Guess what? Rocky Top's a winner. The birthday of Rocky Top and the Rocky Top Bash. Um, I was going to introduce my staff, but I'm, I can't see anything, and I don't think anybody else can either out there with the lights and my family's here but we've had a wonderful wonderful time here and i got the greatest honor yesterday after the golf game had a chance to really shake hands with roy clark and i asked him i've never hardly asked anybody for an autograph and he handed me uh or i handed my hat and i said would you autograph that and he put my hero philip fulmer and roy clark and i tell you i was excited yesterday <laughs> um we uh, certainly have had, as I said, a good time. The, this is the 30th year celebration of the song Rocky Top and written by uh, Felicia and Budelow and been reading some of the history of Rocky Top. It's really a, a special history. It tells an awful lot about the traditions of East Tennessee through the, uh, the verses as you go along. Uh, it tells a lot about the people, the places, and a lot, awful lot about the attitudes of the people of, of East Tennessee, and I think it so shows an awful, tells an awful lot about our heritage and the love for the area here in East Tennessee. Um, I, like Dr. Julian, have had a chance to travel some, and, and you ought to hear Rocky Top played on the bagpipes in Scotland, if you want to treat. That, that was always inter interesting. This past year, I had a friend that... Um, was in the Dominican Republic and he asked, it was a really fine restaurant, and he asked uh, the waiter or the gentleman there, the maitre d', if he could play Rocky Top. And he says, well, no, I can't. And he took a $50 bill, he tore it in half. He says, there's half of it. If you'll know it when I come back, I'll be back in a month, and, we'll play, and if you'll know it, I'll give you the other half. And you, he knew the other half when we got back down to the Dominican Republic. So we have a lot of traditions at the University of Tennessee and a lot of things that people know us about across the country. The stadium obviously is something we're very proud of. We have a very beautiful campus. Uh, as you look at uh, our university from the outside in, if you just watch the football part of it, you would know an awful lot about the Tennessee River and the Volunteer Navy. The teams on the helmet are something out there that everybody's really proud of and is a great tradition. The tee that the band opens to run on the stadium is something that's tremendous, that we're all tremendously proud of. Got Smokey, you know, the blue tick coon, coon hound that's constantly biting at some band member or opposing fan. And we've got the Tennessee walking horse. That is a great tradition that we have. We've still got number 16, Peyton Manning, which we're really excited about. But honestly, Honestly, there's no tradition, no tradition out there, and I don't know that there's another one in the country. There's nothing that is more well known for the University of Tennessee, nothing that excites the fans more at the University of Tennessee. There's nothing that frustrates the other fans of the opposing team more than hearing the sound of Rocky Top because they just know that, that the Vols have just scored again. Thank you. Gives me chills just to think about that tee opening up and seeing the big orange rush onto the field at Nayland Stadium. Rocky Top has been recorded by hundreds of artists, and we saw in the earlier video presentation of people that knew Rocky Top pretty well just uh, singing it out in the street. But it will always be known first as a song of the Osborne Brothers. Once again, to the video screen. I 
I don't know whether you remember this or not, but I don't know whether you remember this or not, but I was the first disc jockey to play Rocky Top. And it was kind of uh, strange. Bobby and Sonny Osborne came up to WSM one night, and I was playing records there. And, and they had this new record, and uh, they were all excited about the other side. Rocky Top was a B-side, believe it or not. And they had a ballad on the other side, which has been largely forgotten. And the, the thing that they were excited about was the fact that they had never recorded with a steel guitar before. And they said, now, boy, l listen to this. This is great. We've got a steel guitar for the first time. And I think maybe later in the night, we might have played Rocky Top, you know, kind of like, well, what do you got on the other side of the record? But ha we had no idea that uh, we were sort of making history and that uh, Rocky Top was going to become one of the all-time great songs in country music. Want me to do this? The vocal group of the year, the Osborne Brothers. remember this or not, but I was the first disc jockey to play rock. And that from the CMA Awards in 1971 as Roy Clark reads the winner of Vocal Group of the Year. Would you welcome the 1971 CMA Vocal Group of the Year, the Osborne Brothers. <laughs>
me. I'm wondering, little darling, what the world you can be. I'll be waiting on the hillside on the day when you will fall. On the sunny side of the mountain where the rippling waters fall. Thank you uh, very much. It's indeed an honor to uh, be <laughs> to be here on this uh, great occasion. I'm going to tell you. No, I wasn't sitting anywhere. No, you're crazier than a lunatic. You're crazier than a. Yeah, you might be right. <laughs> yeah, I participated a little bit back then. Sure did. Had him working, I had him working overtime until 1968, I guess it was. All right, Ralph Emery mentioned, mentioned a minute ago that um, uh, about Rocky Top when we recorded, he was wrong on something though. We, we were pushing the other side of it because it was a ballad, not because it had a steel guitar on it. Uh, a ballad, when you get a slow song into the national charts, it goes up slow and it stays there for a long, long time, and that's what we were looking for. We were looking for a song that would get in the charts because of the of just the steady play that you get from one in there that long. A uh, fast song usually goes, they go up in the charts quick and they come right straight back down quick. And so we were looking for a ballad, and uh, we thought in the other side of that Rocky Top song that we had one. It was a song called My Favorite Memory, and um, little did we know that it wasn't going to work that way, but I'm thankful that it worked the way it did, but this is the other side of it. Once in a life you need someone who gives to you The reason for that life and what some love can do So now I'm armed for troubled times with all my need For I have you, my favorite 
Thank you. That, uh, that young man is from Tampa, Florida. Uh, he's been working and playing fiddle with us for about five years now, a little over five years, I guess, at this time. He just uh, graduated from college in uh, Nashville, Belmont University, and uh, extremely intelligent young man. He, uh, he has got a straight 4.0 uh, from the sixth, whoa, 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 from the sixth grade through college. And then later this year, he's going into uh, law school in, uh, hopefully in Nashville. And uh, if they can find a school smart enough to have him. <laughs> uh, he, what he'll do, I guess, is follow in the path of every, everybody else. He'll go into law school and, and be a lawyer, and then he'll come out and go into practice and find out where uh, all of our money is. and then. After that, he'll go into politics and get it. <laughs> uh, although we do love our blessed Mayor Gavin Bird. He's a bass fiddle player. He's not a politician. He's a bass player. Anyway, this young man is a, is, is <laughs> that's right. That's right. This young man is extraordinary. He's a, an excellent gentleman. He just got married January the 4th, and we're awfully, awfully proud to have him working in our group and for the last five, five, little over five years. This is young David Crow, if you will, please. David Crow. <laughs> Here's a country music legend that all the fans adore. From the great Atlantic Ocean to the wide Pacific shore. He teached Tennessee with the Smoky Mountain Boys and became the Opry's brightest star in French. His name was Roy. He was known the whole world over as country music's king. And you could hear a pin drop when old Roy stepped up to sing. For over 50 years, he brought joy to all the fans with bashful brother Oswald and his Smoky Mountain Band. Oh, Roy, could you take us one more ride on the wings of the great speckled bird or through the hobo jungle on the Wabash Cannonball? Through those pearly gates on his famous train on that day when St. Peter called his name. Oh, Roy, could you take us one more ride on the wings of the great speckled bird? Or through the hobo jungle on the Wabash Cannonball? How I'd love to hear that lonesome whistle squall. Thank you very much. Uh, it's one of, we have a new CD out right now. It's called The Class of 96, and that song kind of tells a little bit, uh, kind of a tribute to uh, the king of country music, Roy Acuff, which was from uh, East Tennessee, and uh, it's a very well-written song. We're, we're very honored to get a chance to record it. Old Roy and, and Brother Oz is the title of it. I want to do you a melody. Uh, it's a pretty... One of the prettiest melodies I believe we've ever run across. We get uh, lots of requests for it. We have it in a, one of our CDs. 
this features the fiddle and all of us do a little little playing on it. Very beautiful things called Ashokan's Farewell. Listen to it. <laughs> Shokin Farewell. That, I, I imagine some of you might have recognized that. That was the uh, theme music 
for the Kenny Burns uh, um, Civil War documentary about 1981 or 82. The tune was written by Jay Unger, and it's a beautiful, beautiful tune, and David Crow did a nice job on it. Give David a nice hand. <laughs> Uh, I think one of the most beautiful melodies ever um, is, is a, a, an old gospel song, I guess you'd call it a gospel song, sacred religious song. It, it boy, it's truly a, a beautiful message, this song, but I love to play it on this instrument here. We're going to play it as an instrumental tonight, and um, surely you recognize it. Thank God for Archie Campbell. All right, this one's written about an old hound dog from Tennessee, appropriately titled the Ten Old Sea Hound Dog. He's a dynamite, uptight, out of sight, backyard, Romeo. He looks like skin on a bone pile. A cat wouldn't give him a glance. When he stretches his long legs out, Foxy got a chance. Tennessee hound dog. Tennessee hound dog. Take 
makes you know she know the girl don't know. He's a dynamite. Ugly warmed over, some dog lovers have said, but he's got more sense in the end of his nose. They ain't got in their hand, Tennessee Hound Dog, Tennessee Hound that song, by the way. I don't know if I told you or not, but, uh, <clears throat> Tennessee Hound Dog. What moves right on for old men, don't it? <laughs> Gracious. I ain't gonna do this much longer. That's right. The young man playing the dobro on the far end of the stage is from Franklin to North Carolina. This year made his fourth consecutive year to win the award Dobro Player of the Year. We're awfully fortunate to have him working with us. He's a great Dobro player and a decent singer. And if we run out of other things to do, sometimes we let him sing uh, a song or two also. But anyway, he's going to play a tune on that Dobro tonight. And Gino, I'll let you name it yourself. Give a nice hand and enjoy Mr. Gene Wooten, if you will. Let's do one that we learned from bashful brother Oswald several years ago. It's one that he played quite frankly on the Grand Ole Opry. It's called the Dobro Chimes. <laughs>
probably fine. That's probably fine. The Dobro Chimes. The young man that's playing the guitar has uh, been traveling with Sonny me and, and, and working with us for uh, 10 years. And uh, we've had a, a, a lot of guys that come down the road to sing with us. We are very proud of all of the people that ever have worked with Sonny me for the last number of years that we have been in this business, which has been a bunch of them. But this young man here is, is one of the finest that's ever stood in that spot there and sang the harmony. We uh, have been known all these years for the uh, harmony that we put out on records and the state shows, everything. This gentleman is, uh, is one of the finest to ever come down the road, though, to, to do that third part. He has a couple of CDs out of his own, and uh, here's a beautiful song that's in one of them. He's going to sing it for you and hope that you'll enjoy it. This one goes this way. If anyone could find the joy that true love brings, a girl and boy, we could, we could, you and I. If anyone could ever say that there. Thank you. Did I tell your name or did I forget? I don't think I told you his name. Terry Eldridge and I stand for Terry. He's from a good state though, really a nice state. Uh, uh, Terry Holt, Indiana. And we will not hold that against him down here in Tennessee. <laughs> All right, this, uh, this gentleman playing the acoustic bass is one of the finest that ever come down the road. And as far as the acoustic bass goes, you, know, you won't hear it any finer. He's a good singer, and he and his brother Billy have written a bunch of songs on our next CD. Why, we'll have some of their songs that they've written on it. But he's he going to sing you one, and he and his brother wrote for us called The Hobo Blues. And on the acoustic bass to sing it for you is Terry Smith, the nice Sanford Terry. How about it? Got a hole in my pocket. I just packed my whole knapsack. Got a train to catch on my home down the track. I've been hanging around this old town way too many days. I gotta ramble on. I must be on my way. I got the hobo blues. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta get the hobo blues. When I get at the hobo. Got 
my whole box car with my coffee can and my whole guitar. Make sure that I'm close enough to hear that passing train. I got the Fred Crane fever chugging in my veins. I got the whole Okay, uh, Terry Smith doing the Hobo Blues, boy, and we hope that we've done some things up here tonight that you enjoyed, or just be, no, 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 that's all right. And, and if not that, I hope we've killed time for Roy Clark to get ready. So, I'll tell you what we're going to do right now, about, I don't know how long it's been going, it's not important how long it's been going, that it happened is important. Rocky Top has been, boy, has just been such a gift. It was recorded in uh, 1967, and the release date, we've been recording 45 years, 45 years, and the release date on Rocky Top was December the 25th, 1967. Now, never in any of those years have I ever seen a release date of December the 25th on Christmas Day, but that song's the release date was December 25, 1967. What a gift it was. Um, in this past year, a guy named Scott Rouse from Nashville has put together some weird sounding Rocky Tops. I'm telling you some weird sounding Rocky Tops. And um, there are four, four different mixes on this CD. Uh, one of them is our old original. One's called a championship mix. We couldn't use it this year, but maybe. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, <laughs> Don't believe what I told that, brother. Not with Mr. Fulber in the house. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Get after him next year, though. We're right behind you. <laughs> and uh, we're big enough to be behind you, too. So anyway, we can play the line, I guess, if we wanted to. Anyhow, uh, and one is called the Club Mix, and uh, the, the other one's called the Radio Mix. I'm going to play a little bit of the uh, Radio Mix for you. I want you to hear how this sounds when they really get at it. Jerry? Wow!
You've enjoyed some part of the Osborne Brothers uh, performance for you. All the guys, thank you very much. Sonny Bobby say good night to you. Rocky Top Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, for the fabulous Osbert Brothers. And coming up in just a few minutes, Roy Clark will perform for us here as well at Rocky Top's 30th birthday bash. I tell you what, 30 years, it holds up pretty good, doesn't it? The proceeds from tonight's event will benefit the Felice and Budlow Bryant Scholarship Fund. Once endowed, this scholarship will be awarded to a deserving student from Sevier County planning to attend the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, majoring in literature. We're very proud to have Mr. Jack Williams, Vice Chancellor for Development and Alumni Affairs, join us now. Jack. It's indeed an honor for me to be with you this evening. A few years ago, I met Felice and Boudelow Bryant when they came to Knoxville to attend a football game. They were on the field at halftime, and we presented them a plaque designating Rocky Top as one of the official fight songs of the University of Tennessee. And uh, Felice, we want to have you and your family back down this fall for a home game. And we hope Coach Fulmer and the squad, or the squad scores a lot of points and you'll hear Rocky Top 400 times in one day on the field. Rocky Top. And Alan's kind enough. Felice, if um, you'll accept this, Alan's going to carry it back to you. And as he does that, um, today I had an inspiration <clears throat> and I want to close my remarks with something that I'm going to call Ode to Rocky Top. And Felice, in your honor, I wrote this in 10 minutes. <laughs> Rocky Top, old Rocky Top, how dear you are to me and to all of those who wear the orange and cheer for Tennessee. Written oh so quickly by Felice and Budelo, your fame has spread both near and far to places high and low. I've heard you played 10,000 times from here to Timbuktu. The Osmonds do you in your purest form, at least I think they do. Banjo, fiddle, or guitar, keyboard, or components. Your music rallies all true vols and rankles the opponents. It's you and UT for 30 years, a tradition we won't sever. I know that you'll live on and on with us. It's Rocky Top forever. Thank you very much. At last year's Rocky Top's 29th birthday bash, the Smoky Mountain Winery bottled a special wine to commemorate the 29th birthday of Rocky Top. A portion of the proceeds were donated to the Felice and Boudelow Bryant Scholarship Fund. And now, from the Smoky Mountain Winery, we'd like to introduce Mr. Daniel Fowler.
Actually, I have two things to present to you tonight, Felice. Um, the first is a bottle of our special reserve LeConte Red. And um, on the back, we have engraved it. And uh, Miss Bonnie Miner, she lives here in Gatlinburg, she did this for you. And I'm going to give this to Alan and bring this back to you. And we hope that you enjoy the outside and the inside of this bottle. And I also have a check here in the sum of $1,275 to go to the Felice and Bulo Bryant Scholarship Fund. And we at the Smoky Mountain Winery are pleased and proud to offer this to the Sevier County students. Um, and we hope that we can do it in the future as well. Thank you. Also last year, Vern Hippensteel donated his time and energies to creating a pen and ink print of Rocky Top to commemorate the 29th birthday of Rocky Top. For the 30th birthday bash, a special print has been created depicting the original manuscript of Rocky Top. Ms. Felice Bryant has signed and numbered 100 of these prints. All proceeds will benefit the Bryant Scholarship Fund. They are available in the hallway as you uh, exit the building this evening and will be a wonderful keepsake. Now with some more special presentations, if you would, welcome again from the Gatlinburg Visitor and Convention Bureau, Mr. Alan Newton. Thank you, Jay. First of all, I would like to personally thank two people here tonight that are very instrumental in the success of this event. Felice Bryant, who allowed me to create this event, and Mr. Randy Fivash, my former executive director here at the Convention Center, who had faith in my original concept for the event. Thank you very much to both of you. I would also like to thank, for all of their hard work putting together tonight's event, in particular, Dina Ivey, Sandra Donahue, Jackie Leatherwood, Vicki Sims, Vicki Johnson, Tony Funderburg, Lisa Morrison, and the rest of the GVCB staff. Also, Dennis Frierson for our decorations, and Mr. Kevin Tierney, who has created all of our videos tonight. Let's give them a hand. They worked very hard. I would now like to present the Rocky Top 30th Birthday Bash signed and numbered print by Felice, the number one print to her son, Dane Bryant. Dane, could you come up, please? I will also be presenting the number two print to Dane for his brother, Dale, who could not be with us tonight. Dane Bryant. Thank you. Yeah. I wish my father were here. He would, he would love this night. In, in, a, in a very glib fashion, he would, uh, he would thank the city of Gatlinburg and Alan Newton for coming up with the event. University of Tennessee, the athletic department, the marching band. But I'm sort of like my mother when it comes to public speaking. I wish that I were on a rocky top. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I want to make a very important presentation to several people here tonight who basically helped us fund this event, our corporate sponsors. They will each be receiving a signed and numbered Rocky Top print. Gentlemen, when I call your name, if you would just come forward and stand in front of the screen, the ladies over here have prints for you. From Kroger's, Mr. Hunter McWilliams. From Knoxville, Coca-Cola, Mr. Roger Lacey. We heard from this next gentleman early on an unscheduled speaking engagement. <laughs> Bill, thanks. Sailor One, Mr. Bill Spate. And finally, from McNeely Whaley Motor Company, Mr. Pat Korn. Let's 
get their print. Larry, we want to get one picture, please, sir, of all four of them. This light, no, no lights, Larry. <laughs> if it's too dark, we'll take another one in a few minutes. Let's give these gentlemen a big hand. On behalf of the Gallenberg Visitors and Convention Bureau, thank you so much for coming out tonight and making this such a success. Jay? Alan Newton for the Gallenberg Visitor and Convention Bureau. Also tonight, let's thank all the volunteers that volunteered their time to come out here in true Tennessee volunteer fashion to help present this evening. And I'll quickly share my own little Rocky Top story. A good friend of mine who's now a Methodist minister down in Rising Fawn, Georgia, Steve Doyle. Steve and I were about to go on a short-term mission trip to Guatemala, and before that we had a few days off to spend, and we decided to make a run down the coast. And we began our run down the coast to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, traveled down the Outer Banks and back to the mainland, and then from the mainland on southward to the Florida Keys and had a wonderful time and a wonderful trip and we were in the Florida Keys every bit of about two hours before we were sitting in the restaurant of a KOA campground on Fiesta Key and a gentleman named Doc on the keyboard burst into a rendition of Rocky Top a couple of thousand miles away from home. It sure did warm our hearts. You couldn't see a mountain, there wasn't a mountain to be seen, just maybe a few waves and seagulls, but it was great to hear Rocky Top so far from home and sure uh, made us miss home a little bit, although we were glad to be on vacation. And I know many of you in your travels, it's amazing to you where you find people uh, as you travel around the country and indeed around the world uh, that when you mention Tennessee, that one of the first things that people say to you back is Rocky Top. And it's certainly an honor to be here tonight with you to help celebrate Rocky Top's 30th birthday. Stage preparations are still underway, and uh, as we get ready for the appearance of Roy Clark, they will let me know from the uh, soundboard over there when Mr. Clark is ready to perform. He will be our uh, highlight for the evening to present music for you here. And, uh, many great stories as well, and he had not a bad round of golf the other day as we, they played the Rocky Top Celebrity Golf Classic over there. Uh, I don't think his team, Bob Kessling as a matter of fact from WBR TV 10, his team was the winning team in the uh, Celebrity Golf Classic, so we'll congratulate Bob. I didn't see Bob here tonight. He's still relishing his victory, I'm sure. Roy Clark's coming up in just a little bit though, so just stand by. He wrote a song that was the first hit song, first number one hit song that Roy Clark ever had. Come Live With Me. Come Live With Me. And that song is so pretty and so laid out that, uh, how long has it been, uh, what, 10 years or more? It's been 10 or 12 years since, since Roy did it. I think it's ripe now. I think it's about ready to come back. And I started singing, come live with me and be my love, share my bread and wine. And Budlow said, uh, is that yours? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, do it again. No, don't do it again. Because when I would uh, compose a melody and he'd ask me to do it again and it was just flat off the top of my, <laughs> flat off the top of my head, uh, I would change it because I couldn't write notes down. I, I couldn't read music. Ludlow said, you know, he says, I hear Roy uh, Clark singing this. And I didn't hear anybody but me. <laughs> and uh, I said, great. I said, can you get to him? He says, yeah. So he calls Hee Haw and Sam Lavello, who was the director or producer. I think he was the director. He was a real hands-on man. Uh, called Roy in, and Boudlow and Roy met. And Roy wasn't too sure that he liked it. But then Boudlow 
uh, said, well, let me show it to you. Come down at the office for lunch and blah, blah, blah. And there was a deli right close by. So I think, I wasn't there. I think that Roy and Boudlow had sandwiches and Boudlow picked up the guitar and came in with these magic chords and that grabbed Roy immediately. He says, how did you make that? What is that? And uh, because Roy is a guitar man and he loves his musical instruments. I'll not delay any longer. The nominees for the Entertainer of the Year are Roy Clark, <laughs> Merle Haggard, Tom T. Hall, Loretta Lynn, and Charlie Pride. And now, the 1973 Country Music Entertainer of the Year is Roy Clark. the year in 1997 received the Academy of Country Music's Pioneer Award. Welcome to the stage, country guitar legend, Roy Clark.
sea of heartbreak, lost love and loneliness, memories of your caress, so divine, how I wish you were mine and again, my dear, I'm on a sea of tears, a sea of heartbreak. It's great to be here. This is uh, a great honor for me to be part of this Rocky Top Bash, honoring Felice and the memory of Boudlow, two uh, dear friends that we will uh, share with you some stories a little later. And it's also an honor to be on the same stage as the Osborne brothers. I tell you, it's, uh, it's my first love is bluegrass music. And uh, it's a little intimidating up here to, to follow them. But I got electricity. I can't be as good, but I can be louder. <laughs> How about a little fiddle music to brighten our part of the night? Ow! Well, Mark and Justin. Uh oh, hold it. I'm, uh, I'm going to change uh, things around. I didn't know that they were going to play the uh, video of Felice talking about uh, this next tune, but um, I remember very well, like it was yesterday, the morning I came in.
Listen, Boodle Bryant, thanks, but I don't think so. But fortunately, he sang me this one. And as Phyllis mentioned, it was the first number one song I ever had. Come live with me and be my lover. Share my bread and water. Be wife to me. Be life to me. Be mine. Let our dreams come by. Be mate to me. Be fate to me. Be mine. With these hands, I'll build a room to shield you. Anyone could have sung that song. I'm just blessed and proud that they chose me. Of all the songs I've ever recorded, uh, I want to do a one that even, I think, in its message and sincerity, even passes, Come Live With Me. This next song, without a doubt, I think is the most in-depth, most beautiful love song ever written. small fortune and you've squandered it all you've shamed me till I feel about one inch tall but I thought I loved you and I hoped you would change so I gritted my teeth and didn't complain Now you come to me with a simple goodbye. You tell me you're leaving, but you won't tell me why. We're here at this nation, and you're getting on. And all I can think of is. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling some of you are just about a half a block ahead of me. <laughs> Thank God in Greyhound you're gone. Thank God in Greyhound you're gone. That load on my mind got lighter when you got home. That shiny old bus is a beautiful sight. With the black smoke rolling up around the tail lights. They sound kind of cool, but I didn't see.
watching you take the respect out of me watching you make a total wreck out of me that big piece of heart is a play of my son thank god and pray you're gone thank god and pray the old lady he me no slim whitman huh you're gone Thank you, that was a fine classical music. Anything to do with the song, I just like chickens. <laughs> very nice but Lord don't I wish one more time soon as the blood returns you have no idea how bad that hurts when I was over there with that little thin smile on my face there wasn't a whole lot behind it mostly pain and you're probably sitting out there wondering why in the world would he keep trying to do it if it hurt him so bad well I'll keep doing it before I get a day job me and 7 a.m. don't get along Unless I pass it on the way back. <laughs> I want you to meet our three lovely ladies who not only sing in the background making us sound better, they do the cooking for the band. We call them tapestry. This is Dava, Tanya, and Tina.
just like Jesse James. Yes, he really worked me over, but he was a credit to his gender. He put me through some changes, Lord, sort of like a And that's tapestry. And that's great, ladies. Before you run off, you're out here so briefly, why don't you just take a moment and share a little bit about yourselves with the folks in the audience? Like, tell them who you are and where you're from. You may run into some relatives that wonder whatever happened to you after you left the farm, <laughs> so to speak. Yes, sure. Hello, everyone. I'm David Brown. I'm an Irish Indian from Poto, Oklahoma. We got any Okies here tonight? We got one. <laughs> well, I can't believe anybody would answer a call like that. Do we got any Okies here tonight? Oh. <laughs> Lord, even with my limited education, I know that ain't proper. Sir. It's do we got any Oklahomians? <laughs> See the difference? Yes, sir. I've told you but time and time again, if you want to learn some stuff, hang around me. Okay. <laughs> you won't get a diploma, but you'll learn some stuff. <laughs> okay, princess, anytime you want to leave a wake-up call. Well, you get a load of this one. Roy, what? it's precious. I know it is. I thought it was Avon calling. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tina Harper, and I'm from the Show Me State. Oh, where's that, Tina Harper? That's Bloomfield, Missouri, and I'm very proud to be here tonight. Thank you very much. I've never known anyone before that their vocal cords were connected to their knees. Hi. I'm Tina Harper. But she's having such a swell time in her little world. If we only knew where it was. Better yet, if she only knew where it was. I'm just teasing. Okay, Tiger, have at it. All righty. Hello, everybody. I'm a Hoosier all the way from Marion, Indiana. My name is Tanya Lawton. Thank you all very much. And that's tapestry. And that's great, ladies. Yeah. I love that part, do it again. I never pick cotton, but my mother did, and my brother did, and my sister did, and my daddy died young, working in a coal mine. When I was just a baby, too little for a cotton sack. I played in the dirt while the others worked till they couldn't straighten up their backs. And I made myself a promise when I was big enough to run that I'd never spend a single day in that Oklahoma sun. And I never pick cotton. But my mother did, and my brother did, and my sister did, and my daddy died young. Working in a coal mine Folks said I grew up early 
And that the farm couldn't hold me then So I stole ten bucks and a pickup truck And I never went back again And it was fast cars and whisk Long-haired girls and fun I had everything that money could bring And I took it all with a gun But I never took up But my mother did And my brother did And my sister did And my daddy died young Working in a coal mine Well, it was Saturday night in Memphis When a redneck grabbed my shirt I when he said, go back to your cotton sack I left him dying in the dirt And they'll take me in the morning To the gallows just outside And in the time I've got There ain't a heck of a lot That I can look back on with pride But I never pick cotton Like my mother did And my brother did And my sister did And I'll never die young Working in a coal mine Thank you. Thank you very much. We just finished recording a new gospel album that I'm extremely excited about. And we'd like to do a selection for you out of the CD. And keep in mind that on the original record, we used a 32-member church choir. And we recorded it in a church, so it really has that spirit uh, in it that, uh, well, you can count up here and multiply by seven and see that we're coming up short of 32. That means everybody has to sing out, double up, make up for the lack of uh, numbers. What part are you singing, Mr. Henley? One of the basses. That's encouraging. <laughs> that means if you're one of the basses, there's more. The guy on the end, most important part, is the bass. And if y'all blow it, you can be back on the farm come Monday. <laughs> the cows won't even realize you've been gone. I sincerely hope that you enjoy it. <laughs> This old sinful world Hardly a comfort can afford Striving along To face temptation so So dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. From my God's own word. Yet when I fail, when I fail the chilling hand of death, there'll be no death.
death for me. Where could I go but to the Lord? The only place I could go. Thank you very much. I want to uh, introduce a young man to you that I've watched grow up. This year, 1997, we're celebrating our 21st year together. And I bet that some of you folks out in the audience... ...1953 Buick. Now he's all grown up. At the age of 10, he was already a world champion, five-string banjo. Tonight, he is working under extreme pressure with Sonny here in the audience, watching every, I don't want to make you uptight, but uh, he's out there with a tape recorder taking notes. If you drop one note, uh, he'll have it in the paper in the morning. Originally from Lovington, New Mexico, Jimmy Henley and his dad, James, the Flying Henleys. Here they are. Jimmy Henley and his dad, James. Take a bow, gentlemen. Mighty fine. I tell you what, there's a lot of talent in that young man. I made a deal with his daddy some 20 odd years ago when we joined up that I would try to help with his raisins. You know, teach him some of the things that I had to learn the hard way and maybe make his life a little easier. And I feel that I've done that through the years through a series of lessons. But it just so happens that this evening, it's time for another lesson. Now keep in mind, what I'm about to do is gonna hurt me a lot more than it's gonna hurt him. My daddy used to tell me that a lot. A lot of times I wished I could have said, Daddy, next time a whipping comes due, could I try your part? <laughs> but I never had the nerve. Now you get your banjo comfortable Come up here in the light so I can keep an eye on you and I will explain the rules to you. Now I'm gonna hit some licks on my guitar, just this side of pure genius. And I want you to see how close you can get to them on your banjo, keeping in mind that sometimes you may think you know where I'm going, but it will behoove you not to try to... <laughs> I love that word behoove. I use it all the time. 
I said it to a lady a while ago in the parking lot. She got on a bus and drove off. Yeah, by herself. Double clutching. <clears throat> Wearing a dress. Yeah, it's hard to double clutch when it was actually a pinafore. You know what a pinafore is? Huh? Don't guess if you don't know. It was before your time. And what I'm, what I'm about to do to you is going to be after your time. Stick with me, Five. We're headed for Broadway. <laughs> If I was you, I'd make sure I had my own bus. Because your luggage will be set off of this one out here. Poke that in your pipe, Pocahontas. Still a little early to be choosing up sides. I got a trick left in this old bag. I mean, I, <laughs> I certainly hope she don't find out. I know that. Supposed to be any dancing on that? He said he said he was doing a macadamia. Yeah, that's a nut. And you certainly classify yourself. No more dancing. I get very distraught when there's dancing going on. I want to double clutch something and put on a pinafore. <laughs> Well, I seem to have lost total control. But I'll get it back after the meeting, after, after this show. <laughs>
Jimmy Henley. That's picking. I'll tell you one thing. Trying to keep up with these young people has taken its toll on me. But I've told them before and I'll tell them again, if they want anything I got, they're gonna have to take it. I'm not giving it up. I worked too hard and too long. They can get it the same way I got it. How's that? It was a strawberry plane on a Saturday night in a dark alley in a brown bag. Ow! Tell me. <laughs> I'm uh, gonna try something for you. You know, because of music, I have been blessed in my life and had a lot of great events happen. And when I look back on it, I guess at the top of the list would have to be the first time that we were invited on behalf of our government and the then Soviet government to make a tour of the Soviet Union back in 1976. And because of that trip, we were invited to go back in 1988. And on that occasion, I was able to take my entire band with me and show them off. And we learned a beautiful old Russian folk song while we were over there that we'd like to play for you this evening called Moscow Nights. Now on this particular rendition, I will be utilizing the talents of the most recent, Bill Monroe Rejects, <laughs> who when standing together with arms entwined, holding onto their little instruments and smiling thusly towards the camera, it reminds you of a countryfied version of Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. All right.
Jay Good. Mighty fine. I mean, I know two ballads, and I usually sing one of them first. Own it! You've never seen me do anything in this position before. Why are you trying to make me jump? That's what I'm looking for. Usually my hands are caressing something at this point. You're a very nice young man, and the fact that you pay attention and see me in my needs, and then you come off of your stool or your little place in the dark and present me with my guitar will not go unnoticed. Come payday, there will be a note in your paycheck. There won't be any more money, there'll just be a note say I appreciate it. I had a request, and that's why I don't want to go any further with that, uh, lest I forget to dedicate a song to a couple in the audience that I met earlier from, uh, from Knoxville. Mr. and Mrs. William Lair are here tonight celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. And they have, uh, they have their 30-year-old son, Clyde, and his family with them. Now, you know, that's the same thing I thought. I probably ought, should do it for Clyde instead. He's going to need all the help he can get. No, I was just teasing. If there's anyone in the audience celebrating an anniversary, has just recently celebrated or is about to, I'd like to dedicate this especially to you. As we used to be But baby I don't mind Cause growing old with you Is gonna be Full of life And good times And if I had to do it all over again I'd do it with you I wouldn't wanna miss a thing Maybe nothing can compare to the good love that we've shared. And if I had to do it all over again, I'd do it with you. Looking back on life, I can't complain. It ain't been easy, but don't you know We still had sunshine, even when it rained And we've shared a love if you have not And if I had to do it all over again I'd do it with you I wouldn't want to miss a thing that we've been through Maybe nothing can compare to the good love that we've shared. And if I had to do it all over again, I'd do it with you. And if I had to do it all over again, I'd do it with you. I wouldn't want to miss a thing that we've been through. Thank you. El Cumanchero.
about this band. From Terre Haute, Indiana, that was Butch Poe on drums. Take a bow, Butch. Wasted energy. Two musicians in the audience this, I mean, well, here tonight, and both from Terre Haute, and went, went straight, and the other one plays drums. <laughs> Don't have many drummers in bluegrass music, do they, Butch? One time, Grandpa Jones was playing the show, and Gene Wooten was telling me he was there when it happened. And this very nervous young man came up to him who was going to back him on the show and said, uh, Grandpa said, and he was just shaking, he said, what kind of drums do you like? And Grandpa said, very little, if any. <laughs> the poor kid just went home in tears. <laughs> Yesterday, when I was young, the taste of life was, was rain upon my tongue. I teased at life as if it were a Polish game. The way the evening breeze may tease a candle flame. The thousand dreams I dreamed, the splendid things I planned. I always built to last on wheat and shifting sand. I live by night and shun the naked light of day. And only now I sing. The years ran away Yesterday When I was young So many happy songs Were waiting to be sung So many wild pleasures Lay in store for me So much pain My dazzled eyes refused to see I ran so fast the time And youth at last ran back stop to think what life was all about and every conversation I can now recall concerned itself with me and nothing else at all Crazy day brought something new to do. I used my magic age as if it were a wand and never saw the waste and the emptiness beyond. The game of a love I play with arrogance and pride and every flame I lit too quickly, quickly done. The plans I made all seem somehow to drift away and only I am left on stage to end the play there are so many songs in me that won't be sung I feel the bitter taste of tears upon my tongue the time has come for me to pay for yesterday when I was young Bless your hearts, thank you. You are very nice. I want to do something before we do a little special thing. Uh, I want to uh, show off some of the guys in the band. 
uh, the, you've met most of them, but we have some new members since uh, the first of the year. Some of them have only been with us a, a matter of uh, oh, about a month and a half now. And we're going to do a little tune, and I want you to listen to and pick, and uh, then you'll realize why I'm so proud of them. We're going to do it in song. A one, a two, a do it like this. <laughs> Listen while I tell you about a place I know Down in Tennessee where the tall corn grows Hidden from the world in a bunch of pines Where the moon's a little bashful and it seldom shines Civilized people live there all right But they all, all go native on a Saturday night Back on keyboards from Mount Vernon, Missouri This is Richard Kennedy oh. This is Mark Pierman. Seven months ago, this young man joined us. Uh, seven months, seven weeks ago. He's doing a marvelous job from Nokadaches, New Mexico, Wisconsin. Here is Justin Bartoldi. This next young man on steel guitar performed with Loretta Lynn until she retired, and now we have him from Lima, Ohio. This is Bobby Hemker. This is a young man that holds us all together. He's from uh, somewhere in Illinois. This is Brad Alpin. that hard do it again <laughs> story about a place I know, down in Tennessee where the tall corn grows, hidden from the world in a bunch of pines, where the moon's a little bashful and it seldom shines, civilized people live there all right, but they all go native on a Saturday, Saturday night. Ladies and gentlemen, take a bow.
Bless your hearts. I didn't mean to turn my back on you. Uh, before we go any further, I want to say something serious because mainly I don't want you leaving here this evening thinking all I am is squirrely and flaky because I do that on purpose and hee haw didn't, didn't help. But there is a serious side to me, and I want to be serious for him. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being such a beautiful audience this evening, and I mean that. And we all realize that we're here for a very special cause. But you came out and supported, and you, were, uh, you are a beautiful audience, and I thank you. If anybody asks, tell them you did all right. And I also want to thank some other folks who've been working their hearts out to make us look and sound as good as possible. First of all, our lighting crew. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Our sound engineer, Sid Pierce, thank you, Sydney, wherever you are, for another great job. Uh, Chris Armstrong is our monitor engineer, and everyone else throughout this entire building who got together to make tonight po uh, possible, especially all the volunteers. Because in my heart, I know, without volunteers, this world would stop revolving. And I thank you. I want to share something else with you, and this is not heavy, and it's not to imply that you don't already do it. It's just a reminder to all of us. The first chance you get, do something nice for someone. It doesn't take all that much. You can smile, say good day, hold the door open. And don't wait around for a thank you. You don't need it. Because once you're alone, you're going to feel so good. And that's only part of it. Because of you, that person will go out and do something nice for someone else. And that person will do something nice for someone else. And it'll spread. And this whole world can wind up doing nice things for each other and we can be the ones that start it. Let's start it. That's for love, it's still the best. In this old world of music. I want to invite uh, two very talented young men back here to come out and help us. They had the first hit on the song that brought us all here this evening. Where is, uh, I see Bobby, where's Sonny? He's out there trying to get the bus started. Sonny was always like that. That was where he gets his slickum from for his picks. Now they do it in a key that I was back there singing with them while y'all did it a while ago and I hurt myself terribly. Because he sings up here like that. Bobby and Sonny Osborne. Welcome them back, please. What the? Oh, I, I'm just going to get back here, and if I, if you hit a note that's anywhere near my range, I'll lean into it. That's B natural. He just said, I said, that's B natural. He said, that's it. I'm used to that. I'm used to that. All right. We're like Delta, buddy. We're ready when you are. <laughs> when you said Delta, I was thinking of a Mississippi mud flat. No, no, no. You talking about the airplane. Yeah, that's it. That's
like a duck in a pen. All I know is it's a pity life can't be again. Thank you very much. You're doing good.